Hello, welcome everybody. So today we're going to talk very briefly about timetables. You already know about the date tables. Um, and now we're going to talk about timetables, how we can create them and what are the choices that we have. All right, so over here we see a date table. Uh, uh, the code behind it uh, is the one that, uh, that my colleague and boss Frederik van der Putten created. So I'm going to give you a very brief look at it. But what if we want to have a lower level than this? What if we want to go below the date level? So let's say that we're interested in um, making a report that contains the average number of steps, in this case because it's Fitbit, the average number of steps that I did per hour. Maybe you have some, uh, some reporting needs that need to, uh, to report on the minute level or maybe even the seconds level. So let's see how this is possible. So the first thing that you might want to do is you want to add this information to the date table, but that's not a good practice. You will see that it will generate a tremendous amount of, of records for every year. So if you have like 20 years of data, you will not be able to put this in, in, uh, in Power BI. Um, so what you can do is you can create a separate table besides your date table, also at a timetable. Now, but how do you do that? Well, it's actually quite simple. So first thing that we're going to do, let's close this. Let's have a very brief look at our uh, fact table first. So you can see that we have for every minute, we have uh, calories, distance and steps coming in. So in this case, we need a timetable to, to link it properly. So we go to the table tools, click on new table, and we're going to call it timetable. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a generate generate series function and what this will do is we'll give it a start and an end value the third parameter is optional and it will generate everything in between these numbers including the start and the end right now you can see that the column name is value so we don't want that so we use the select columns function and we give it another name a proper name so in this case this is the hour and we're going to use the value column as the base. And now we get the same result except with a different column name. So next thing is we're going to put this in a variable. We're going to call this our table. And I hit enter too soon. It should have been shift enter. The return statement and then our our table. And this will give us the same result. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do this one more time for the minute table. And instead of going from zero to 23, we're going from zero to 59, of course. And we're going to change this. It's not the hour, but it's the minute in this case. So the value column stays the same. And that's just brief second return this and now we see that we have all the minutes. What you're actually going to do now is as a demo purpose is at the seconds table as well. Seconds table, it's the same zero to 59, but this one is called second. And now we're going to join these three tables together. We're going to use the cross join function for this and we're just going to pass our table minutes table and seconds table and we hit enter and there we have it now we have 86,400 rows so it's the combination of all three tables if you're not interested in the seconds level if this is too granular for you then you can just leave it out and then you will end up with 1440 records all right now one more remark let's say that your granularity is something in between that is every 15 minutes you have data coming in what you can do then is set this one to 45 and let's set the increment value to 15 and what it will generate is four numbers 0 15 30 and 45 and that way you will end up with 96 rows so far so good let's set this back to 59 and leave out the third parameter and there is one thing missing over here now 
because you can see that the date table is linked with the date column. So the timetable should be linked with the time column as well, but we don't have a time column yet in our timetable. So let's provide that one. Let's go back to the timetable. And how do we do that? We use the add columns function. And we're going to add a column. We're going to name it time. And we use the time function. All right. And we're going to use the hour column, the minute column. No, so we're going to pass a zero over there. And now let's hit enter. And there we have it. Now we have our time column over here. The only thing is it still is actually a date time column. Um, so we're going to change it from date time data type to the time data type. And then it is also formatted properly. Now we can link the time column from both tables together. And there we have it. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give a, a very quick example of what we can do with this in the report. And I'm going to add the hour as a new column. So the hour over here, I'm going to use the related function and I'm going to use the hour that we have defined in our timetable. All right, and the reason is the following. So this is the report that we already have. Averages per day, maximum uh, per day. We're going to add a new clustered column chart. And we're going to do this for the hour in this case. So we're going to put this on the axis. Now the problem is when I just add the steps as the value over here, we can already see that, that there is a pattern. It's, it's interesting. But I can see over here is 25. So we change this to categorical. And as usual, we then have to sort it in a proper way. Now I can already see that I have this, this pattern. This is very nice, but the values are not okay. So this is all summarized. And the problem is from the moment you go to average, you're seeing something more or less the same pattern. But the problem is that the values are not what you're interested in. So what you're actually seeing is the average based on the minute level. And I know that I set more steps than this in an hour. And the way we can fix it, and I specifically want to show this to you. So I'm going to add a new formula. I'm going to add a new measure. And I'm going to fix the hour and the date. So I'm averaging over these two columns. All right. And I'm going to use that one. So the average over here it will be my value. And that way I can see proper averages over here. So especially now uh, this formula is very useful, especially if you're going to uh, combine uh, in one graph several different levels like year, month, uh, hour, minute, whatever you want. And that's the way how you can do this. I hope this uh, short tutorial was useful and I hope to see you again next time. Bye. Thank you for watching.